Okay, hello guys. Uh, today will be my review of FTL. Um, I did the Let's Play on it last week, so if you haven't watched that, please go uh, watch that. I kind of summarise what I'm going to be saying in that while playing through the game in the Let's Play you know, fashion. Kind of what uh, Jake does on Mondays and Tuesdays. Um, okay, so as I said, um, you know, this is the second video now. Uh, second review. Uh, I think the last one went well. Um, you know, following up from Chivalry, um, it's got for our channel at least. It's got a fair amount of views. Um, I think it went well. I'm going to continue kind of doing it in the same format. I've made a little bit of a change, but it'll be roughly the same. Um, it will be out of 40 this time rather than 30 because last time I did Chivalry, as I already said, and it was online only. So the extra 10. Uh, that the, uh, I dropped it from out of 40 to 30 because uh, the extra 10 points make up the story section and there was no story due to it being online only whereas I'm gonna try and include it on this um, review as because as you know as um, although FCI doesn't have a set story there is there is a story that develops as your crew and team kind of go through it and there's a story as much as you know like um Civilization has a story, you know, it's a story that you develop yourself, and although it's not a set story like an RPG, it's more of a random element to it, it's still a story. But we'll go on to that section soon. Um, first, uh, background uh, it was published, um, well, well, it was developed by Subset Games. Um, as far as I know, it was. It's only available on Steam. Um, um, when I first saw it, I actually quite uh, liked it. I thought uh, my initial response I thought would be good as long as it's done well. It's not done to, um, you know, as any game. To be honest, it has to be done well. But you know, uh, it's very. You have to. You can't make it too, too much reading. Too much, you know. Um, too complex, but not, not. Com complexity is fine, it's just as long as you do it in the right way. I think, I think uh, overall, I think it was done fine. Uh, there isn't too much reading. It's not like a, a whole text-based RPG or anything like that. Um, it's a space simulator. Um, so obviously, space is a theme, and uh, uh, the simulator is the genre. Genre, uh, and you kind of just go around flying. Uh, I've done a few videos on it now, so you can just go watch those. Um, basically. And loads of other people on YouTube have done it. It's, it's for an indie game. It's got quite big, um, and kind of you just fly around and, and and try and fly away from the oncoming rebel forces without being caught by them. And I think I th I've never actually played complete the game, um, I, but I think at the end you do just kind of. You, you fight the rebel forces, you know, you, you, you just beat them in the end. Um, it is considered a roguelike and top down strategy genre. Uh, so, roguelike being you're kind of more. you're picking up items as, as you go, it's more that. Uh, it, it's, it's, you're, you're making your own story or you're picking up items as you go and trying to just survive rather than obliterating everything. Um, because there's a scrap mechanic and you go kind of pick up uh, scrap which then you can then buy from stores and, and trade with other, trade with other uh, ships and um, it can help all you know you stop some confrontations that kind of thing and top down strategy being that you're you're looking straight down on the actual ship and you're controlling your units um, within the ship to different parts of the ship to to give you different bonuses and different like if, if, if uh, to give an example uh, I think if you're in the shields then shields regenerate faster because every missile um, or every laser deactivates the shield but if you've got something in the shield room then it will act, react a bit faster and if it breaks then you need to repair it that kind of thing. Uh, on to gameplay um, maybe you remember last time in the chivalry review I said there was gimmicks on the list. Gimmicks on the list this time. Uh, obviously, I'm keeping the same format. Keep it fair. There is 
Need to know gimmicks. Uh, gimmicks is, is this kind of thing like a portal gun in Portal. It's something that keeps the game interesting with still being a puzzle genre. Um, and is kind of more... Keep, keeps that game unique. Um, I don't think there is many gimmicks for, for a space simulator. Um, I don't know what else it could have done. Um, no gimmicks, really. Um, the gameplay overall uh, is an indie game, so I don't want to say too much about the budget and and uh, the actual quality and time and spent on the the graphics or that kind of thing. But for gameplay, gameplay is very uh, it's it's unique for you know space simulators aren't that common, so the gameplay compared to other games just in general in the video game industry is very unique. There's not many of them that are done very well. Um, I think Endless Space was done, that's quite a popular one, but recently there is. But Space Simulator, uh, I really liked it and I'm not... We, you may have heard that me and Jacob don't play these type of games much, uh, but I really like this one. Uh, not, not sure about Jacob, Jacob doesn't, doesn't own the game, but um, I really liked it. So that's one thing. Um, uh, the level design, I've also got down, but the level design, I mean, there's not really any levels, is there? But, but the, the, I can comment on the type of fleet that you can get, and which means, like, like, uh, fleets, like, um, different type of ships that you can come into contact with, contact and conflict with. Um, it's very random. Like, the first encounter you can have would be, like, could be a very difficult boss, and you could die straight away. But, um, which is great. Uh, it is great. Um, I think it keeps it, you know, going. It Because it, if it was just very, like, uh, I don't want to say linear, because it's not really the type of linear that linear means now. Um, whereas, you know, like Final Fantasy 13 or whatever it was, it was just literally a straight line. Um, there was some comments on other games like Max Payne being that too, but um, which I thought was, I didn't think Max Payne was as bad, but um, the level, uh, it's not, it's not linear, but it's, it's, if it was linear you'd get bored of it very quickly, because it would be the same every time, and one of the main things about this game is it's got really good replayability, uh, as you can just keep replaying it, and it gives you lots of different ships you can unlock. I've unlocked two, I think, two or three. And using those different ones means you get different units, and those different units give different perks. Those different perks uh, to the ship could be like you add an extra drone from from, from day one, uh, mission one, which is which you know changes the whole momentum of the game. Because means you can pace yourself straight through the first um, galaxy sector. I think it's called sector sector, um, and move straight on to the next one. And um, another great thing about level design, well, kind of linked to level design, is that after you finish the sector, you get to choose which path you want to go on, all these paths link up, so you can kind of plan where you're going, and even in the same sector, you can kind of plan your route to the nebulas, and risk going through the nebulas, or going straight up, or through the through a rebel fleet. Um, so there's a lot of, of strategy, in quotation marks, um, a lot of planning, well, I'd say, um, and kind of guesstimating how good you are and how prepared you are for different routes. Like nebulas, I always avoid nebulas. I said that in my most recent playthrough that came out uh, Friday the 15th. Um, Called this on the 16th. Um, ready to go out on the 22nd. Um, but uh, yeah, so I really like uh, how the randomness keeps it going, keeps it fresh, keeps it spon spontaneous if you like. Um, so yeah, I think I'll give it quite high. Um, can't move off gameplay, in fact, without talking about how um, the ship is, how the ships control it. And I really like the ships control. Again, it's what I think makes this game really nice and unique. Because, like, if a fire comes, uh, comes in, you know, your ship catches fire in a room. You can open all the doors and, and vacuum, vacuum the place out. Uh, but then that lowers oxygen, so you've got to make sure that your oxygen isn't too low. And if your oxygen gets fired upon, then you need to increase that. And like, you, 
you need to be very dynamic about where you put your people and plan how you're going to fire and you've got a certain amount of missiles and I said in my last playthrough um, on the 15th like I just said um, I only use about two, one to two missiles because then you run out very quickly and missiles don't come, you don't come across very many missiles I don't find if you're playing on normal that is um, so yeah I'm, I'm talking really fast because I'm getting really uh, really enthusiastic about it now I really don't, I'm going to play it after this um, I'm going to have to honor because I'm going to have to record some for this this game um, this this up this little review video, but um, maybe you'll see some of that uh, movement about. So yeah, you have to kind of be very um, quick, but like uh, yeah, actually I don't pause pause the game. You can pause the game and move it then. So you don't have to be quick, but you have to be very. Um, it's still tense, you know what I mean. You have to be very. Um, you know, quick on the ball, on the ball, to, to, to know what you're doing, otherwise you're gonna, if you start a fire and you don't deal with it straight away, it will spread. Um, same with, like, if you get drones, or if you get people landing in your ship, you, you're gonna, you're gonna die if you're not quick and you know what you're doing. So, um, I like that. I like that it's very tense, but still very casual game, very easy to get into. Um, the audio. um, next part, music. Uh, in my last playthrough, I let you have about 30 seconds of me not talking um, and playing, listening to music, just the music playing. Um, I really like the music. I think it fits well with the genre and the style. It's not overpowering. It's very ambient in the background. It's very nice. Uh, it doesn't distract the gameplay, but yet you still know it's there. You feel the presence of it, the essence is of of something being there is there, and it goes well with the fighting and the conflicts and the new discovery you know it, it and you know it does kind of remind you of the Star Trek music which is kind of what everybody thinks of when they look at the game you know shields up all that kind of thing you can the shields all that kind of thing um, so oh uh, yeah music good point probably get high for that uh, sound effects um, Sound effects are nice, uh, they're very basic, it's just lasers and drones which fire lasers and kind of like clunky noises and like when shields open the vacuum vacuum noise and of the air escaping, um, like the hiss when they escape, uh, laser fire, missiles, kind of just a thump, um, missile, when you fire a missile it's just a thump, so it's all very basic, um, but, you know, it, it, that's all it needs to be. Honest, it doesn't need to be any, any more than that. Uh, if you wanted to make, you know, this, it wouldn't, it wouldn't fit within the, within the style uh, of the game. Adding that in. Voice acting, like I said in my playthrough, voice acting. There is no voice acting, so I can't give that a mark. But it will score high for music. Um, which will push that back up, which is, which is fine. I think if the music's fine and the sound effects are fine. Uh, in fact, the music is great. So, why you know why get voice acting? It doesn't need voice acting. There's no point in getting it. Fair enough. Um, graphics. Uh, moving on. I've encountered no glitches. I haven't heard of any glitches being found. So, or bugs or any, anything like that. No bug reports or anything like that. So, it seems to be tested fairly well. Uh, it's not. It's not. You know, the graphics style is very basic. Um, you can kind of see the pixels, um, but that's fine. It doesn't distract from gameplay, um, but at the same time, it's not the feature. Like Minecraft, everybody says, you know, the, the pixel art is the feature, uh, is a feature of the game. And even some people have gone so far as to say gimmick, going back to the gameplay point, because um, it adds uniqueness to it. Uh, it's only a little uniqueness, but I think. It's fine. It doesn't distract. It doesn't complement. It's just there because it needs to be. It doesn't need to be. It, you know, it didn't need to. I wouldn't say that they need to spend any more money or any more development time on it because the game is fine. It runs fine. For all I know, they spent more time fixing the glitches and the money on the glitches rather than on the actual development of the actual graphics, and that is fine. I I would prefer it that way. Um, as an indie, if it was a AAA title, then it would have to have, well it wouldn't have to, but it would have to, it would be, it would, it, I would prefer 
uh, it to have a lot better graphics because I'm probably paying more. This is like four quid, six quid. Why? Well, I don't. I don't need to pay that amount of money for this. I'm not. I'm not expecting much. I wasn't even expecting this good amount of gameplay. It's, it's actually gone over my expectations. So I'm pleased with the graphics. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's fun. Uh, story, as I said, story. I uh, kind of got into already. Stories. Um, it's very. I like it. Um, I like the randomness, as I said. I like how it's very spontane spont spontaneous. Uh, it's it's you kind of get to choose your own path. And although this isn't a set story like law, like a, a set like um, story and law, there is a story. But there's it's not like a novel. Like it can't be written into a novel. There's a set story. It's more like um. Those old books you used to get where you used to flip through the books and there used to be dice at the bottom and you used to roll the dice and choose a different path and the story. It was, it was, it's that basically. Which is the roguelike element. It is that, um, essentially. Which I think is, is great. You get any games like that, I think this fulfills that game and that story brilliantly. The text isn't too long, but it's just enough and it kind of describes everything you like and you, you have that sense of, of trans transversing and discovering these new sectors. And having the contact with that new, uh, with with new with new galaxies and new sectors and new races, um, I kind of said earlier that it was like civilization story, but it's not really. It, it that's something you can compare it to because you're making your own story based on luck and randomness and spontaneous spontaneity. But there's more of a story there. There's not. There's more. Because it's all written down, you can kind of trace it back. Whereas, is, whereas with civilization, it's more like looking over a history timeline. Um, with this, it's more looking, you know, it's closer to to law, like law as it as it's far at its finest, like Witcher Two law and World of Warcraft law. It's closer to that than than the timeline. Um, so, I think that's fine. Um, it, it does it well, that's what I can say. So, in conclusion, um, I think uh, the repairability and longevity of the game is very good because, uh, as I said, you can just unlock those new uh, ships and use all those and retry, or you can just redo it again. Because of the spontaneity and randomness, everything will happen in different ways. You'll have lots of different things happen. It'll all be different. It'll be it'll be great. Um, I've replayed it loads of times. Ten hours, never completed it, um, and I've restarted about sixty times. It's it's probably not as much. I haven't died as much, so I'm not as bad as that. But I think you know, in one playthrough, um, I'll restart about three times just because I'll die that much, and that's fine dying because when you restart, it, it's like a new game, and it's like you're restarting the fun, if you like. If you like. Um, that's a really bad way of putting it, restarting the fun, but um, kind of are, but yeah, so I think longevity, I'll play it, ages, I'll play it, I'll play it for more than I, I think Dishonored or Hitman is the longest game I've played on my Steam account, anyway, just on Steam, with 30, 35 hours, 33 hours. But I think I'll play more than that with this game over time. I don't. I don't play it all. Ten hours is probably just because I don't play it. You know, because there's not a set story, and I prefer like the reason I go back to a game is think, oh, what's going to happen? Whereas with this, it's kind of like, oh, I fancy playing FTL because it's nice to relax into. There is a story there which I like in a game. Um, so that's that's good. Um, Enjoyability is also down, and my opinion on mashes into one for this one. Um, I enjoy it a lot. That's my opinion. I enjoy it a lot. It does it. It does what I want it to do well. It does what I want it to do, you know, really well. Um, I'm pleased with it. Great. I'm happy. Cost. Brilliant. It's like six quid. Ten hours. I mean, if we divided it up by per pound, per British pound, because I'm in Britain, and per hour of gameplay, if that's how you want to do it. It, it depends on how like your your money, econ economic standings and your 
and what you, how much you value for your time, all that kind of thing. But it, but let's just do it simply. Uh, you know, if we divide it up a pound for the hour, I've got more already out of my time on FTL than I have for Dishonored, and I really like Dishonored. I may even do a review of it later on, but um, or even <laughs> even Assassin's Creed. You know, that's uh, three days, which is you know. Uh, I made a review on that as well, but my thoughts on the actual story isn't isn't great, um, and the actual missions aren't great. Uh, the multiplayer is fine, but no one plays it. Moving on back onto FTL, uh, so another review. Maybe I'll do that next week. Actually, that might be a good idea. Complete that game yet? Um, maybe I'll do this on as actually. Anyway, you can wait for that. So yeah, I really enjoy it. I think for the low cost, it's brilliant. And gameplay, audio, graphics—they're all—they're all either equal, like average, or high, which is great. So yeah, FTL, goodbye. See ya.